Oh, hello, class. I didn't see you there. I was just holding my baby. This is Mr. Mundall from the future. I hear you're struggling with your sock puppets. I made this tutorial to help you. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to create your movements using one of the puppets from a few years ago. And as you see here, we've got our stick. So I have two examples for you. We have one with tape, so that's creating a joint. So we might see some flexion extension and just a straight stick. So I've cut these and made a hole so that I can add it in to create our movement. So I'll start first with just the straight stick. So we'll put that in and we would sew this up, but I'm gonna leave it open for our example. And you'll need a threaded string. So remember, you want to wrap it around your finger, pull it through the loop to knot off your two strings at the end. This is really important uh, for getting you started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna anchor it. So you pull it through almost to the end and then you're gonna feed it back through your two strings. So hopefully you can see that. You have your two strings and that makes a knot. So I chose red so you can see it really clearly, hopefully. So we'll pull it tight. And the string's kind of thick, so I have to, it's hard to knot. Okay. Once we have our knot, now we can go underneath because we want to keep it kind of hidden from view. And we'll feed our needle through. So we're trying to make this look like tendons, right? And our tendons are deep under our skin, connecting our muscle to bone. So stay close to where you exited the fabric, and then you're going to stay underneath. Then if we feed it through again, so you can barely see that string now. And then feed it one more time. That will set up our string. So now, if we pull on the string, it's gonna bend our leg. So flexion, extension, flexion, extension. So because I made that joint with the tape, it allows our leg to bend and straighten, just like that. Good? So, now that we have got this set up, I'm gonna leave some string. So leave a good amount hanging off. And now we're gonna tie a bead to it. So just like we did with knotting off our string, we're going to create a little loop around our bead and we're going to feed it back through. So it takes some time. So now we have a knot on our bead and to make sure you're gonna double knot it so that will hold it on there. So now we have our knot. So we pull and let go and then it hangs off, it gives it some weight so it can hang off our body. And then when we pull, flexion, extension, flexion, extension. So the last part, once we've created our movements, we're gonna take a piece of tape rip it and then we will fold it so that we have a little label. Now this is two movements because we have flexion and extension. So on one side we can write flexion and on the other we would write extension. So now if someone were to hold my 
musculoskeletal model, they'd say, oh, flexion. When you pull, it's going to create flexion. Just like that. Then if we wanted to finish this up, we would re-stitch up the hole. So I'll come back to my string, tie it off. So you knot your string again. Make sure you get lots of string from the start so that you can keep building. And you would do the same thing. So you pull it through, anchor it with your string, and now we can stitch between our two ends just like we're sewing up an injury. So you're gonna loop loop. So I'm going to loop, loop, loop. And that will stitch up our little entry point. And then pulling it tight each time. And then I can loop back. Loop back. And then to end it. So this is always the hard part. To end our stitching, we're going to Find a stitch, go under the stitch, and pull it through. So we have a little hole we made, we pull it through, and make a knot. 